Welcome to Arise and Shine broadcast. If you're watching on Facebook, please take a minute to share and also click the like button. By doing this, you never know whose life you may impact. Uh, if, you, if you have not liked the Revival House page, please do so now. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe so that you may be notified when we go live uh, so that you do not miss on the word. God bless you so much and welcome. Last week we looked at the topic of hope in God and today we are going to continue in part two of the message. Uh, let us first of all uh, refresh ourselves, you know. We looked at the hope that comes from God as compared to the hope that we have uh, normally and the hope that we rely on something is going to happen and which is uh, fluctuating so much depending on our feelings and circumstances uh, and we saw that the hope in God comes from actually believing and trusting in God and making him our hope it is not that we should start hoping in God uh, but we make God our hope amen and God becomes the source of uh, this hope that we are talking about amen let us look at the scripture in the book of Romans 15 uh, from verse 13 uh, it says I pray that God the source of hope you know uh, will completely fill you with joy and peace we know that sometimes uh, we hope some bad situation may change we also hope for the good situation to come our way and for good uh, uh, things to come our way and we have this hope and i believe it's what makes you even wake up every morning no one wakes up in the morning hoping that the day will be bad we all hope that the day will be better uh, from one day to another but then this is a different source uh, and, and a different type of hope that we are talking about here. We see in Romans 15 verse 13 that the Bible says, uh, I pray that God, the source of hope. So the hope that we have been talking about is the one that comes from God. He is the source of hope. And even in these perilous times, in these bad situations that we find ourselves in, in this perishing world, a world which is full of difficulties from left to right we see now that the whole world is trying to fight against the virus and uh, you know it's very easy for hope to be lost or hope to be challenged and in these times where is our hope that we are going to overcome even the COVID-19 where is our hope you know we turn our terrors as we said last week we turn our terrors we turn our gadgets on and we are looking at the statistics and what is happening around the world how many people have actually contracted the disease now how, what level are we at as a society every day uh, the governments are updating people on the situation and they are they are updating and saying what can and what cannot be done but in this time where is our hope where is your hope you know if you make god your hope if you hope in god and you trust in god uh, god is going to bring us through this situation in the name of jesus it's not any clever man it is not any of our doings we have seen even uh, big organizations like uh, who come to us and tell us what we thought uh, the, how we thought the virus is behaving is is behaving differently and they, they, uh, they keep on updating the data because no one really knew uh, anything much about this uh, COVID-19 and how it's been transmitted for example uh, and and how it's you know its magnitude uh, we saw yesterday uh, some fresh uh, announcements uh, or, or, or and some fresh infections happening in in different factories and so many people uh, maybe only one or two uh, who, who test negative in those uh, factories so what are we doing where is our hope even in this time this scripture reflects us uh, and takes us back to the 
word of God and takes us back to God. And it talks in Romans 15, 13, as I continue reading. I pray that God, the source of hope, uh, will fill you completely with joy and peace. You know? And how? Because you trust in Him. We see that this source uh, of hope, this hope is coming to us or will come to you because you trust in Him. Amen. Then you will overflow with a confident hope. You know, I love this, that after you have trusted in God, you will overflow with hope. This is what happens when you trust in God. Hope becomes your lifestyle. Everything that you do, you have hope which comes from God, from that assurance of knowing that God is in control, from the assurance of knowing that God is our hope, from the assurance of knowing that He is in charge. Amen. And allowing Him to guide us through every situation. And it continues to say uh, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, when Jesus Christ was ascending after his uh, death and resurrection, there is something he said. He said, Behold, I am not going to leave you alone, but I'm sending you another who is going to be with you. You know, when, when, when he was here, when Jesus Christ was here, he could walk with his disciples and he could teach them, he could encourage them when they were faced by circumstances. He was there for them to stop the wind blowing, for example, during the storm when they were in the boat and in the sea and the boat was rocking. Jesus was there for them because they, when, he, when, when they woke him up, uh, he stopped and calmed the, the, the sea and the boat could not, uh, did not capsize. And we see that when he was here, he was with his disciples. He was their source of hope. And he did miracles, signs and wonders. But when he was ascending, he said something very profound. He said, I am not going to leave you alone, but I'm going to send you another who is the Holy Spirit. If you're listening to me and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have never welcomed God into your life, you have not made Him the source of your hope, the Holy Spirit has been sent to us by Jesus Christ. And He is the one who, when you accept Jesus as the Son of God, then the Holy Spirit comes in you. He lives in you. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that you, you have this overflowing hope. Amen. So this hope is not just from our feelings. It is not hope that comes uh, from, from just wishing. It is hope that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to have this hope because He is in us. He reminds us of the things that the Word of God has taught us. He enables us to have this kind of hope. Amen. You know, we are not called to start hoping in God. We are not just being told to, to put our hope in God here. We are called into this hope. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the leeches of His glorious inheritance in His holy people. Praise God. In order that you may know the hope to which He has called you. We have been called into hope. It is not just a feeling. It is uh, God's presence. It is this hope that we know that God surely is with us. We have been called into this kind of hope. Sometimes our trust is in different things. I remember of a rugby prayer who was interviewed and he was the best prayer at that time. And he was asked, uh, how do you manage to, you know, be the best rugby prayer? And he was talking about how he, you know, he trains, how he has uh, come into his career, into this great success in his rugby game. And he was the best American 
uh, rugby player at that time. And then he was asked uh, what position he holds uh, in God and how, how, uh, whether God has helped him. He said uh, that he does not need God because he has everything that he has. He has come this far. Where has God been to help him? You know, he has done all this without God. And it is possible for us to uh, not have room for God and to just hope in our strength, hope in our abilities, in what we can do, and think that we are so, uh, you know, educated, for example, or we, we have our positions. But I pray that even during this pandemic, that you will see how big authorities have been brought down low. How the things that we thought are our daily life, all of a sudden they become nothing and we have to be in lockdown. And we all have been put in this position by something so small, something so microscopic. We have seen how the things that we relied on, all of a sudden they stop being our source. And the jobs that we thought we cannot do without, the things that we thought we cannot do without, they just lose meaning in one day. And all of a sudden, what has been our meaning? Our meaning has been our families. Our meaning has been uh, getting back to God, you know? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 17, verse uh, 5 to 7, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts and relies upon another man, and whose mind and heart turn away from the Lord. Amen. Cursed is the man who trusts upon another man. You know, if you put your trust in another man, if you put your trust in what I can do for you, in what your boss can do for you, in what your member of parliament can do for you. If you put your trust upon your parents, upon your children, upon any other man, let me tell you something. The strength of a man can only take you so far. And that is why the Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 5, Cast is the man whose trust is upon another man. Because that other thing that we are putting our trust in can fail us at any time. The Bible says in verse 6, For he will be like a shrub in the parched desert, and shall not see prosperity when it comes, but shall live in rocky places of the wilderness, and inhabited salt land. But the Bible says in verse 7 that, Blessed is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. What is your hope and confident expectation? What is your hope today? Amen. Make the Lord your confident expectation. Because when you have God as your confident expectation, and when you know that He is in control, you will not waver from the right. You will not waver uh, to the left, blessed is he who will make God the source of his hope. The Bible says in the book of Psalms uh, 146 verse 5, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob and whose hope is in the Lord his God. Amen. I didn't used to know why the scripture used to, or, or says here, the God of Jacob. But when we look at Jacob, in the Bible, we see that Jacob is a good representation of the weakness that man can have in his weak moments. Praise God. And the Bible says here, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. You know, sometimes you feel like saying, I don't deserve to have God in my life. You know, that is true. But he's the God of Jacob. Jacob stumbled and made, made mistakes. But God remained his God, you know. God was his eternal refuge and God is our refuge as well. That even though we have our weaknesses as men, but still uh, we can make God our hope. Amen. God is there for us even when we are weak because God is not relying 
on our strength. God is saying that he is the one who is the source of our hope. It is not uh, our weaknesses because man is weak. It is not our weaknesses that determine uh, how God is going to be the, the hope in our lives. But it is when we come before him and say, God, we are weak. We are not strong. We cannot make it to fight. We cannot make it to fight the situation. But we will rely on you, God, intervene, help us in this moment, in the name of Jesus. Let us make God our source of hope. Amen. You know, hope in God brings security. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 11, verse 18, you will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. Amen. You will be secure because there is hope. You know, but let us look at why you will be secure. We can only see this by looking at the preceding verses. So let us go about five verses before that. In the book of Job 11 verse 13, it says, Yet, if you devote your heart to him, God, and stretch out your hands to him, and if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then free of, um, of fault, you will lift up your face, you will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget the, your trouble, recalling it only as water's gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday, and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope, and you will look about and take your rest in safety. You will ride down with no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favor. We see here that when you devote your heart to him, that is when you have this hope. The hope we are talking about today is not the kind of hope that you have when situations are bad and you are running up and down looking for help. It is not the hope that comes from just wishing or praying a prayer in one day. It is the hope that is born out of the devotion that you have before God. If you want this kind of hope that we are talking about here, it's not just a mere wish. It is a hope that comes from the assurance of having God in you. You know, the, the Bible has uh, told us here in chapter 13 of Job 11 that if you devote your heart to him and stretch your, heart, your hands to him, and if you put away the sin that is in your hand. So this is a pre prerequisite of getting this kind of hope. Today I pray that you will make a decision to live for God, that you make a decision to devote yourself to God, to live a life devoted fully to searching God, searching God with all our hearts and with all our might, amen, and putting away sin and making God the center of our hope. Amen. The hope that we're talking about, hope in God, comes from relying on His word, relying on His promises. The Bible says in the book of Romans 15 verse 4, For whatever was written in former days, which is the word of God, was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. Amen. The hope that we have today is coming through the encouragement of the scriptures. It's coming through the word. When we read the word of God from page to page, we have hope because we have found, we find hope in that word of God that we read. Amen. The word of God is full of hope. The things that he has said about you and I are full of hope there. When you read them, you get this kind of hope that we are talking about. This is not hope that just comes from wishing. It is hope that comes from reading 
the word of God and seeing what he has talked about our lives. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 130 verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits and in his word I have hope. Amen. So it is in the word of God that we get this hope that we are talking about today which is energized as we saw. It is, uh, you know, through the Holy Spirit in us, through God's word. And let us look at the scriptures in the book of Psalms 91. It has become my source of hope, even during the pandemic and during these situations that we are facing. Psalms 91 has become our source of hope. Psalms 91 says, from verse 1, I'll read to verse 8. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, those who make God their hope, those who make God their shelter, they will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord, verse 2, that He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God. I trust Him. Amen. For the, uh, he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. I think COVID-19 is one of the most uh, deadly diseases. There, there are other deadly diseases. In fact, uh, some people have been comparing uh, past pandemics like MERS uh, and other diseases and seeing how deadly they were. And even some diseases are, are with us today like cancer and other diseases they are deadly diseases but verse 3 is saying for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease verse 4 he will cover you with feathers he will shelter you with his wings his promises are your armor and protection when you make god your refuge he will cover you you know if you look at a chicken, the way it covers its, uh, its cheeks with feathers so th to protect it from that ego, to protect the, ch the cheeks from disaster. This is how God will cover you with his feathers and he will shelter you with his wings. Amen. Make God your refuge. Verse 5, do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that rise in the day. Uh, you know, there are terrors that happen. And when we talk about the night here, it is the dark times. We are living in some dark times when no one knows especially what is going to happen next. No one knows where we are going to come uh, to with the COVID-19. You hear the news and you hear like yesterday's news that there is fresh infections happening with COVID-19. Terror that is happening everywhere. Do not be afraid because when you are afraid of these terrors that are happening, you know, you attract what you fear. Let us be connected to God and make God our hope. When you have God as your source of hope, this fear cannot have room in your life because God is greater. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Verse 6, do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness not the disaster that strikes in, uh, at midday. Amen. Though, verse 7, though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you make God the source of your hope and you pray to God and you go before God and tell him, God, although a thousand are falling at my side, though 10,000 are dying near me, oh God, I know you are my source of hope in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the one that I rely on. Let us make God our source of hope. Obviously, we are not going to put ourselves in harm's way. We are not going to ignore the guidelines uh, from the government and say that we are making God our source of hope. No, we are going to observe what uh, the guidelines are, but also we are going to know that God is our source of hope in the name of Jesus. Verse 9 continues to say, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, this is the condition that we are being given here in the Word of God about making God the source 
of our hope, the refuge, if we make him our refuge, you know. Verse 10, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. I love God for the ministry of angels. May God order his angels to protect you wherever you go. May God order his angels to be with you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. If you make God your shelter, let us look at uh, verse 12. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot uh, on a stone. You will trample on, on, on lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will secure those who love me. I will protect those who love, whose trust is in my name. Uh, when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them, and I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. The Lord says here that he is with you if you make him your shelter. He will be with you. God says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. Today, love God. Trust in his name. He has said in verse 15, I will be with them in trouble. It is not that trouble is not going to come in your way, but God is going to be with you in that time of trouble. Before you are in trouble, you are already making God your refuge and you are already trusting in him. He will be with you even in your trouble. Praise God. As we have seen time and time again, when man has been in trouble, he's called upon God in just a sp short span of time, then man goes back to the same lifestyle they were living before because now the trouble has been taken away. But the kind of hope that we have been talking about today, the kind of lifestyle that we have been talking about today is one in which it's our daily lifestyle. It's our daily hope in God. When you put your full trust in God, God is going to be with you He's going to rescue you. He's going to honor you. He's going to reward you with a long life and give you his salvation. May God richly bless you. May you make him your refuge. May you make him your shelter. And may he become your hope. Do not trust Mary on any man and forsake God, but trust in God and make him your hope. I'm going to pray with you and you make God your source of hope from now going forward. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name for the person that is listening to me right now. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus as they make the step today to make you their source of hope. God, thank you because that is exactly what you have said you will do. You are becoming their source of hope in the name of Jesus. Terror shall not be their portion. Thank you for you are protecting us right now because we have made you our shelter. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. And if you are watching today, you've never made Christ your refuge. You have never made God the source of your hope. I'm going to pray with you right now that you may accept Jesus Christ as your savior, that you may accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and He will live in you through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the person that is deciding right now to live for Christ, to live for God. They have been in darkness for a long time. They have trusted in man. They have thought how they do not require God, but today they've realized that they require you and they're making you their source of hope. Bless them, O oh God, and come into their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that from today you will be their shelter and their source of hope in the name of Jesus. Thank you for you have accepted them into the family of the children of God and into the beloved. They have become Christians 
from now going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that you have paid the price in Jesus' mighty and holy name. We pray and believe. Amen. If you believe with me, I believe with you that you have become born again and you are now a child of God. Call us or text us in the numbers on your screen right now and we will help you in your new walk with Christ and give you more materials and more word that you can read and that you can know the, uh, and have the revelation of what God has in store for you and what he has said he will do in your life. God bless you so much. And may you have a victorious week. And remember to tune in tomorrow. And God is going to bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.